In this module, we're going to learn about if-else statements. It's going to be kind of interesting because we've actually looked at a lot of sequential statements so far in our app script. This is the first time we're going to start to do, we're going to make some decisions. We're going to start to do some selection. So if you think about this, you know, every custom function we've had, everything that we've done so far, it's been an instruction and then an instruction and then an instruction and then an instruction. Uh, basically, we call a function, it returns a value, but there's not really been any branching. Everything just kind of happened in a very sequential manner. Uh, we execute one statement another statement another statement another statement and so on until we get to the end of the function so if we call another function uh, it's still sequential we call the function we do some things we still kind of have this process where every single one of our statements gets executed and we don't really do anything variable within our program so what if your code could do different things? Uh, if you think about this, you know, we have this kind of arrow which represents the sequential uh, execution of our statements. But what if we get to a decision? What if we could make a decision and then have possibilities of how we, how we run our program? You know, we could have different statements that occur based on different types of uh, different decisions in our program. So we have this thing in AppScript called if statements and we have these in JavaScript and C and in Python and a lot of different languages but if we look at these basically an if statement allows us to selectively execute our code and if we look at the structure of each one of these we have that if keyword so we say if and then we put some type of evaluation in parentheses and then we wrap everything that we want to happen in the curly braces so those curly braces are the same one we use in functions and one of the nice things about app script is that it wraps all of our different blocks of code in this sort of curly curly brace manner. So we just look at the if statement, we evaluate it, and then we do a sequence of things. So if you look at this one in the top or on the left side, we have if score is greater than 100, we're going to set the score equal to 100. All we're really doing there is saying if the score is more than 100, we're going to keep it at 100. On the right side, if we say answer equals A, we're going to return correct. Notice how that's two equal signs in a row. If we used answer equals A with one equal sign, uh, that would actually be setting answer or equal to a which is not what we want so we use two equal signs when we are using this if statement then we have if sum is less than or equal to 60 uh, result is 1000 and if we can even embed an if statement inside of another if statement so here you can see if sum is less than or equal to 50 we're gonna set result equal to 500 so we have a kind of different outcomes there if sum is say 55 we're gonna end up with the result equal to 1000 and if the sum is say 45 we're gonna end up with the result equal to 500 after this if statement is completed so you can see how you can kinda of build these together to make more and more sophisticated decisions now we also have boolean values that we have to think about because once we get into if statements we have to evaluate things as booleans so we've thought about strings which are text you know letters that we tie together and we've thought about numbers that are just integers or decimal point numbers uh, but boolean values are also something that we can have and boolean is simple it's just true or false we use boolean ev values for evaluation we can use them for a lot of other things and as we continue through the series you'll see that we can use them for lots of lots of applications so when we evaluate, we have a couple of symbols we like to use. We have a greater than symbol. If X is greater than Y, we have a greater than or equal to symbol, which is greater than and then the equal sign. So it's pretty straightforward. Less than works the same way, and it also has a less than or equal to. The equal to, we use a double equal sign. Uh, we actually use sometimes three equal signs in a row, but we'll get into that a little bit later in our, our series here. Uh, we have a not equal to, which is your exclamation point, and then an equal sign. We also have combination so we can use and or and not to, to combine these together so if you look at here we have if x is less than 10 and x is greater than or equal to 3 so if x is 3 4 5 6 7 8 or 9 that statement will be true so we'll evaluate that to true and we'll ex execute our if statement in that situation if value is equal to 15 or value is equal to 20 so if value is either 15 or 20 we'll execute our if statement for that instruction and if score is greater than 90 and score is not equal to 100 we'll execute in that situation so you can see how we can use and or a not to tie a lot of different evaluations together it allows us to do a lot of interesting things and allows us our programs to make some interesting decisions we can also use if else statements if else statements allow us to do an alternative so if we have a if statement that should execute over here on the left side we can see if a is equal to 40 or a is less than 15 and then we have if not a is equal to 40 or a is less than 15 so you can see how one of those is just the opposite of the other if, if something is 40 or, or less than 15 it can't be the opposite as well so we actually have a shorthand we use an else statement in JavaScript or in JavaScript or app script to uh, to actually 
do the alternative thing here. So we can do two things with the same statement. If a equals 40 or a is less than 15, we'll do one thing. And if it's not, we'll do something else. So both of these are equivalent, the thing on the left and the thing on the right. But the thing on the right is a lot cleaner. It's a lot easier to understand. And typically, if we can write less code, we want to write less code. It just makes it easier to maintain in the long run. So we want to avoid this thing on the left because this else statement just makes things nice and clean, nice and simple. It's really easy to follow what's going on here. And usually when your code reads like you're speaking, you know, just speaking normal words, it's usually a little bit better. So if else statements are pretty common. We can also get into if else, if else, if else, if else, if else, if. Uh, and you can see here, you can chain these together. So if X is greater than 400 or 300 or 200 or 100, uh, or if it's not any of these things, we can do diff we can perform different operations. So you can see here, we're gonna set Y equal to X minus 100 if it's greater than 400. We're gonna set it to equal X minus 200 if it's greater than 300. So think about that, you know, if a number is 500, it's only going to execute the first, the first block here. If X is greater than 400, well, 500 is greater than 400. So we'll execute that first block and we won't do any of the rest of these. But it, let's say X is 150, well, well, we'll skip the first one because X isn't greater than 400. We'll skip the second one because X isn't greater than 300. We'll skip the third one because X isn't greater than 200. But when we get to this else if X is greater than 100, finally, we'll execute this block. So we'll just set Y equal to X. Uh, or if X is not, you know, let's say X is 50, our, we're going to get to that last block, that last else, and Y will be equal to zero. So you can see how we can kind of chain these together to create these more complicated decisions and, and, and use a lot of different blocks or use a lot of different evaluation within one statement. So we're going to get into some exercises using these if statements. I uh, hope that you'll enjoy them. I hope that they'll make your programs a little bit more interesting. Uh, thanks for watching for now and uh, stay tuned for some more videos.